Okay, so now that we know what the business cycles are and how to identify the different parts of the business cycle, um, you probably have a lot of questions. So maybe why do we care about what phase of the business cycle we're in? Because um, now we know how to measure it, we know what to look for, right? So now we could talk about what phase of the business cycle we're in now, right? Using the indicators, right? So we could pull up the unemployment rate graph, um, look at the current uh, GDP trend, right? Um, and the inflation rate and see what the, the what part of the business cycle we're in right now. And so we'll do that uh, next time I see you guys. Um, but they probably you have lots of other questions like, uh, what causes the crash to happen, right? Because we talked about we get to the peak and then crash, right? Um, and so we'll talk about like, why does that happen? Um, we might want to know like, how do we know we're at the peak? Uh, or maybe what starts the recovery, right? Once we get to the trough, what, what causes uh, the recovery to happen? Okay, so, so then let's talk about those things. All right, so we don't actually have any way to know what phase of the business cycle we're in at any particular moment. And we're gonna talk more about this because what matters is what comes next for the most part, um, right? Because you don't know if you're at the peak until tomorrow the crash starts, right? Um, and so it might be that, you know, things feel really great right now and maybe things are gonna keep feeling great for years and years and years, right? Um, or maybe the economy will crash tomorrow, right? Uh, I say that every year. Uh, and last year, it turned out to be true, right? Because around this time last year, the economy did crash very quickly. Uh, but it didn't the set previous seven years uh, before that I've, I've taught econ, right? It's like, it's like, maybe it'll crash next year. And it didn't for like seven years straight, okay? So the GDP just kept keep going up, kept going up. Um, but then the coronavirus lockdowns happened and everything shut down. And then suddenly, like, very sharp decrease in real GDP, very sharp increase in the unemployment rate, um, and uh, decrease in the price level. Um, okay, so then what causes a crash? Okay, so obviously um, the crash that happened about a year ago was because of, of worries about the coronavirus, um, and you know, in some industries where the coronavirus was spreading, um, you know, businesses had to shut down, uh, and obviously that impacted real GDP and their ability to hire workers and all of that. Um, but normally recessions happen uh, or begin with um, a crash in a particular market that sends reverberations. So in 1929, it was a, a stock market crash um, that was the like catalyst for the Great Depression. Um, in 2009, there was um, a bubble, we call it, in the housing market, which is when um, something that people think will increase in value uh, becomes really popular and lots of people think it'll increase in value and lots of people buy it and so the prices get really high and then people realize, wait, <laughs> the price of this has gotten really high. It probably isn't sustainable. The price is probably going to go down. I'm going to sell before anybody else and then the price goes down a little bit, right? And then everybody panics because they don't want to be the one who still holding it when the value falls, right? And so everybody tries to sell it once and the prices collapse, okay? So that happened in 2009 in the housing market. Um, and so in certain places, Phoenix and some places in California especially, um, house prices fell dramatically. Um, and that caused a lot of panic and caused a lot of people to lose their jobs and companies to shut down and demand to fall. Uh, so even just some problem happening in one particular market can have can send shock waves through the macro economy and cause problems uh, in other industries. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty common to have a boom and a crash, like a bubble in a particular market. Um, and we'll talk about um, a particular business cycle theory that deals with that later on. Um, could be um, a particular uh, shock to the macro economy, and we'll talk more about these. But in 1973, um, the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, and then a bunch of oil-producing countries got angry at the United States and uh, for their support of, uh, for its support of Israel. Gosh, was that? Maybe that must have been earlier. Um, maybe I'm getting the times mixed up. But the, um, uh, the organization of petroleum exporting countries, which we talked about as an oil producing cartel, um, got really annoyed at the U.S. support of Israel and so refused to sell oil to the United States. And so oil prices in the United States skyrocketed because at the time we were importing a lot of oil and not producing as much of our own as we do today. And so 
um, as energy prices skyrocketed in America, obviously that had huge implications for everyone who uses energy, which is every company, every person. And so, um, yeah, huge increases in, in prices of certain things and just a lot of panic and uncertainty. Um, and, you know, again, a bunch of companies lost, uh, went out of business, a bunch of people lost their jobs. Um, and so, uh, so pretty much anything that causes a shock um, can like be the cause of, of a crash. Um, because people are pretty quick to panic. Okay, so the first thing they panic about when things are going wrong is losing their jobs, okay? And that has really significant implications because if they're worried about losing their jobs, then they don't wanna spend money, right? Um, because they wanna save money so that if they lose their job, they have some savings to live on, okay? But it's a problem if lots of people start saving suddenly and then companies aren't able to sell as much as they expected to, they panic, they cut a bunch of workers, right? So really any big shock um, could be the thing that causes a peak, uh, right? That causes you know an expansionary period to become a contractionary period, okay? Um, right, it just turned out that the 10 years before the coronavirus pandemic was just a time of straight expansion. Okay, so the expansionary phases tend to be very long, as I said before, uh, and the contractionary phases tend to be quick. Okay, so you get, you know, steady, 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 drop, and then steady, 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 drop. Um, okay, so that's kind of how that rolls. Um, okay, and so then thinking about what causes a recovery to happen is a similar idea. Um, so you have the, the crash, things are bad, 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 right, and then you get to the, the trough, things are bad, right, but they, they turn around, right, and you then have the recovery. And so the recovery can happen um, for a number of different reasons. Um, we'll talk about some government policies to try to get the recovery to happen faster. Um, but the, the economy has some mechanisms to help bring things back to normal, and so we'll talk about those too. Um, but one of the things you'll notice is that the price level's low during the, the trough, and so that's a time when the world goes on sale, as I said before, right? And so that's really appealing uh, for people who have savings, right? To be like, oh, you know, I was I was thinking of buying a second house, or I was thinking of buying a car, or I was, I was thinking of buying a grill, right? And now they're all on sale, right? And so as people, as things like start to settle down and there aren't as many people actively, you know, losing their, their jobs, um, then people get more comfortable with like, okay, well, if I haven't already lost my job, I'm probably not gonna lose it. Things seem to be stabilizing, right? And then they feel comfortable spending again, and then companies feel that the demand is returning, and then they, they start hiring workers back, right? And so the things start to get back to normal, okay? So that price level dipping um, can be a, an important mechanism for um, bringing things back to normal, okay? Because it encourages people to spend who otherwise wouldn't really want to. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Good job, guys.